All right. Turn to uh, Psalm 104. We're going to we're going to be there in just a moment in Psalm 104. You know, one of the things you see in the Psalms is that David meditated on various things. And it wasn't limited just to David. You find that Isaac uh, went out into the field to meditate at eventide. And um, when you think of meditating or meditation, you know, that's really a foreign thing in a way, but it's, but it's really sort of not. Uh, meditation is, um, uh, you know, I think it's more the word that, that we, we really maybe don't, don't use it a lot. Um, but you know, you might think of, you know, going for a long walk, you know, in the evening, uh, you might, you might think of it as sitting and thinking about something, uh, you know, you're, you're not in a hurry. You're remembering some things, um, by reflex, I think we naturally tend to stew on things that bother us. You know, so that would be a lot of our meditating, you know, uh, just just that seems to come very naturally. Um, David meditated on various things um, in Psalm 77. He says, I will meditate also of thy work. And of course, several places he, he talks about, I will meditate in thy precepts or in thy word. In Psalm 143, he says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. He said, he said, I take time. He said, sometimes I just sit down and I think about the things God has done throughout history. Um, in Psalm 77, you find this. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own spirit. Um, and so I want to talk to you tonight about um, our, a certain a very specific meditation. Look at Psalm 104, verse 33. Psalm 144, verse, I'm sorry, 104, verse 33. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. And look at one other verse on that thought, and that's in Psalm 63. My meditation of him shall be sweet. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And you know, uh, really, <clears throat> what, you, uh, what you're always thinking about is what will uh, make you happy or make you sad. It'll, it'll, it'll make you have bright prospects or it will make you have dark prospects. Um, you know, somebody said long ago, you can't make yourself happy. You can't uh, look in the mirror and say, I'm going to think myself happy. Now, you know, people will try to tell you you can do that, but we all know that's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, you can be positive. You can look on the bright side, but, but you know, that's not, that's not thinking yourself into happiness. But... If you think about something that is good and, and, and cheerful and something that brings you gladness, if you think about that thing, suddenly that emotion will rise. If you think about something that's sad and dark, that emotion will come to the surface. Um, your meditation will, what you meditate on will greatly determine you know, your outlook on all sorts of things. Um, Psalm 63, verse 5. Psalm 63, verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when 
when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. David said, my meditation of him shall be sweet. Now, I'm not going to be long tonight. At least I don't think I am. Um, but I want to talk to you about meditating on the Lord. You know, I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I sort of want to throw out the question, you, you know, uh, and maybe you do. Maybe you do. Maybe you think about the Lord all the time. Um, but I want to ask you, do you, do you, do you meditate on the Lord himself? David said, when I do that, it automatically becomes a sweet meditation. My meditation of him shall be sweet. And there's, there's a number of reasons for that. Look at um, Romans 16, 7 for a moment. <clears throat> there's a phrase that um, David, I'm sorry, that Paul is famous for. And it just shows up all over the place in the Pauline epistles. Romans 16, verse 7. It says, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles. Notice, who also were in Christ before me. Now that, this, this the message tonight is not about this, but you ought to circle that phrase. There's a, there's a group of uh, strange ducks out there on the internet, and they've existed for a long time. Uh, they existed long before the internet, and they're called the ultra dispensationalists. I mean, they're so dispensational, like, like they got the book of Acts itself divided into 10 different distances. They're, they're just way out on limbs. And uh, you know what they'll say? They'll say that um, nobody was in Christ until Paul. Now, Paul is the one that uses that phrase, in Christ, all the time. But this verse, as the Bible does so often, this verse corrects that thought. Because in this verse, Paul speaks of people that were in Christ before him. You know, um, I can meditate on the Lord. And one of the things that makes that meditation sweet is I am in him. Uh, you ought to think about that phrase. There's some of these things you really could stew on and you're never going to get to the bottom of them. But they're amazing thoughts. You know, Ephesians 5, it says we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. We are as believers, we are so united to Jesus Christ. There's no way on the planet you could ever lose your salvation. And we are in him. Colossians 3 says we are hid in him. You know, um, one of the sweet things about the Lord himself is in Psalm 103, it says he knoweth our frame. He knoweth our frame that we are dust. Man, he knows what we're made of. Um, you know, that was one of his purposes in coming to earth. Um, he took upon him the form of flesh. And uh, <clears throat> you find him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, it's an interesting phrase. It says he began to be sore amazed. You know, uh, the Lord in the Garden, um, he, uh, he experienced the agony. Um, and you know, the Lord knows our frame. He knows, he knows, he knows what it's like to be tired. He knows what it's like to be hungry. He knows what it's like to run low on sleep. Uh, he knows what it's like to work hard. Um, he knows what family problems are like. Uh, he knoweth our frame. He knoweth our frame. Another sweet thing about the Lord is, um, he can justly forgive me. In 1 John 1, familiar verse, it says, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what that means is um, he doesn't have to cut any corners to do that. It's, it's not an emotional thing with him to forgive you your sins. You know, he's not, he's not forgiving you because he feels sorry for you. And if he did that, that would be unjust. 
because that means he would play favorites. And that means he would forgive the ones he felt sorry for, and he wouldn't forgive the ones he didn't feel sorry for. But he can do it justly because all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was bruised for our transgressions. Man, he paid the debt. And so he paid it for our sins. All our sins were yet future. And you know, when you uh, when you confess your sins and, and you're sincere and you're not you're not playing a game, but you you confess your sin, um he can justly forgive it. You know, he, he's not doing it begrudgingly. Um, no, it's it's your that sin has already been suffered for and paid for. He can justly forgive it. So he's not expecting you to crawl on broken glass. He's not expecting you to whip yourself for a week so you can pay for it. No, somebody else was already whipped. The Lord Jesus already paid that debt. Um, that's a sweet thought. Um, you know, one thing about the Lord is, um, another sweet thing is, he is ahead of me and behind me and around me. Look at Psalm 139. <clears throat> this chapter is uh, and what you know every chapter in the bible is amazing but this is one of those amazing chapters psalm 139 O lord thou hast searched me and known me thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising thou understandest my thought afar off Thou compassest my path. In other words, he surrounds my path. Thou compassest my path and my lying down. You, you're going to lay down a little bit later tonight. I guess who's going to be all around you? Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before. He's behind me and he's in front of me and it's laid thine hand upon me. <clears throat> Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. You know, one of the things about the Lord, um, you know, you, 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 you may very often feel alone and I, I, you know, that we understand that in, in your thinking in that human sense, but man, he's ahead of you. He's behind you and he's above you and he's underneath you. He's, he's, you're surrounded. Um, look at Psalm 34. As a kid, I was terrified of the dark. Uh, you know, you know, being in, being in my bedroom by myself for you know, I, as for a long time, and uh, you know, you know, you're 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 in your bedroom, you know, and and it's and it's dark, and and you know, it, it can be creepy, especially if you're by yourself. Uh, it can be creepy as an adult. And, uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I do sleep with a baseball bat beside my bed, but I know, I know I'm not going to, I'm not going to kill the boogeyman with a base bat, <laughs> with a baseball bat. I know that. <clears throat> but man, what a different slant it throws on it when you realize 
The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. And he compasses your lying down. You ought to meditate on that. That's a sweet thought. No matter where you go, if you're his, he goes with you. Look at Psalm 34, verse 15. We've we've read this a zillion times. And yet, do you ever stop and think about it? The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. He is watching every moment. Now, you know, right away, you'll, you know, I don't know, maybe you won't, but a lot of times our mind shifts into the negative. Oh, the Lord's watching, the Lord's watching. Yeah, but, but you know, the Lord's aware of all our enemies. You know, if, if you've got an enemy somewhere and they're, you know, and they're, they're trying to get you fired at work or they're, you know, they're trying to pull a fast one, you know, and, you know, and, and you know, they're talking about you and, and, and they really are. But, you know, you're you're never privy to any of those conversations. But you know who is? The Lord. And the Lord is watching. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, we, we go to we go to the Lord and we tell him what's happening and he wants us to pour out our heart. We're supposed to. But he knows more about the situation than you're going to tell him. I mean, he he's heard their every word. And shall not the judge of all the earth do right? That's comforting. Amen. He is what he's listening. It, it'll take a lot of stress. It'll take away a lot of your insecurity and a lot of your worry. If you just realize, you know what? The Lord's eye. It, it's on me. It's on you. Look at Psalm 62. I sound terrible. I'm not nearly as bad as I sound. Okay, so Psalm 62. So again, on this on this same thought, the same thought of, of your enemies, you know, and the people that are working against you. Look at Psalm 62. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. Now watch. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long, he says to his enemies, how long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly, Selah. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my refuge, or the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. <clears throat> the Bible says in Isaiah 54, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The Lord is a man of war, it says in Exodus 15, 3. Um, look at Psalm 35, Psalm 35. Psalm 35, verse 1. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy thy salvation. You know, um, Again, you know, I don't know if you've got any enemies right now and, you know, uh, you know, as life rolls on, you know, somewhere along the line, they pop up here and there. And um, and the temptation is to be worried and fearful, especially if they seem like they have some power. Um, But but the Lord is your defense. He has committed himself. 
Uh, David said another place, the Lord is my shield. He is my shield. A couple, a few more sweet thoughts about the Lord. Um, I'm not, you don't have to turn there, but in Joel 2.25, it says he will restore unto you the years that the locust hath eaten. You know, um, a lot of times um, people look back and um, they um, they feel like they've lost a lot of time. And God says, I can do more in a short amount of time than in all. Your, he says, I, I can make up for all those previous years. You know, the devil is the great discourager. The devil is the great, you know, the one that gets in the shoulder and tries to want you to make you feel like your best years are behind you. No, um, you, you know, every day is a new opportunity. And if it was about us, yeah, we, we would be losing ground. But it's not about us. We're, we're linked to him. And, uh, and he can restore in us the years that the locusts have eaten. Um, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Jeremiah 32, 17. Um, there is nothing too hard. Um, he says in another place, is there anything too hard for me? He said in another place, all things are possible unto him that believe it. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't matter who you're praying for. It doesn't matter what situation is in front of you. Uh, y'all think about, y'all to meditate on this. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Nothing. The Lord has encouraged us to pray something. Look at Psalm 90. You'll notice a lot of these thoughts that we're looking at, not all of them, but many of them are in the Psalms. You know what David thought about a lot? He thought a lot about the Lord. And the more he thought about the Lord, the more positive his outlook became. He said, my meditation of him. He said, it shall be sweet. Um, look at Psalm 90, verse 13. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad. Now, what, what a prayer. What a prayer. You know, and, and, you know, Johnny Spiritual out there somewhere is going to tell you about, you know, well, you know, you know, all the darkness that, you know, is, is part of this life. Well, absolutely. That's totally true. And yet the Lord inspires this prayer at the mouth of David. And he said, Lord. Verse 15, make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants. We, we know he's working. You know, we get little rumblings once in a while. We hear things. and, and But he, he said, it's okay to pray and say, Lord, let us see what you're doing. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yes. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. The Lord has encouraged us to pray that. You know, another sweet thing about the Lord is he converts wrong prayers into right ones. You know, a lot of times we pray and uh, sometimes we know exactly what to pray. And sometimes, you know, we're, we, we just know, okay, this is what I need to pray. And, um, and there's other times you're praying. Um, I don't know. I think you'll often be this way. You'll, you'll be talking to the Lord about somebody or some situation and you'll say, Lord, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say about this. I, I don't know what to ask for. Sometimes you'll pray for something and you'll almost be conscious that what I'm asking for here is probably not the right request. The good news is in Romans 8, 26 and 27, it says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And it talks about he that knoweth the mind of the spirit, you know, and how the Lord works in the midst of all that. 
we we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but that's okay. You pray, and the Holy Ghost fixes it as you pray. Look at Psalm 27 for a minute. Psalm 27. <clears throat> the problem is not knowing what to pray. The problem is not praying. Man, if you just haul off and pray, the Lord will take care of it. Psalm 27, verse 13. I had fainted, David said, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Um, you know, um, the Lord wants you to believe and the Lord wants you to believe that you're going to see what you're hoping to see. David said, I had, I had fainted. He said, but I believed I was going to see what I was praying for. Look at Psalm 69. Another sweet thing about the Lord. Psalm 69, verse 30. Psalm 69, verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Now, I, I want to reread that again, but I want to emphasize a word. Okay, verse 30. I will praise the name of God with the song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs. The Lord loves your praise. You. You know, the Lord loves it when you praise him. Uh, it, it, it pleases the Lord. Look at Philippians 3. You know, you might not know exactly, you know, uh, the next step or you, you might be, you know, there might be no spiritual opportunity that's setting in front of you in the next six hours. And, and you know, the fact that you're here tonight, that pleases the Lord. That's a blessing. The Lord, you're faithful. You came. And um, but, you know, you know, something that you and I could do that would please the Lord. I will praise him with a song and magnify him with thanksgiving. Look at Philippians 3. Another sweet thing about the Lord. Philippians 3, 14 and 15. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. The Lord can show me where I'm off track. You know, if, if I love the Lord, if you love the Lord, and, uh, you know, if, if you're if you're off track somewhere, um, uh, God shall reveal even this unto you. Man, if your heart's open to him, um, he, can, he can and he will. He'll make it really clear. Another sweet thing about the Lord is, if I deal honestly with the Lord, he will deal honestly with me. Psalm 1826, Psalm 1826 says, with the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. You know, if, if you deal honestly with the Lord, you know, you don't have anything to worry about from him. You, know, you just keep everything open and honest with the Lord. And he's going to deal with you in that same way. Um, and on that same thought, look at Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. In verse 15, it says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place 
with, he dwells there with someone. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And the thought is this. This is a really sweet thing about the Lord. If I stay low, if I stay humble, he will keep me close to himself. Lord says, I dwell in that high place. But he said, but in that high place where I dwell, he says, he says, I keep the humble right there with me. You know, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. If I'll just stay low, if you'll just stay low, you just stay humble, uh, he will keep you close to himself. In Psalm 32, you find these words, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. One of the things the Lord said he will do is he will guide you. If you're looking for his will, if you're looking for guidance, he will guide you. He has promised it. Look at Luke 19. We're almost done. There's all sorts of things about the Lord. Do you ever think about the Lord? One of the things about the Lord is that he's going to reward us, of course, for serving him. And the reward will considerably exceed the labor. You know, um, the, the Lord is going to he's going to he's going to pay you and me for what we've done. He's going to pay you for what you do. But but it's really going to be way out of proportion. Like he, he's going to pay you way more than you're worth. Look at, look at Luke 19, verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his 10 servants. And of course, the Lord is painting a picture of himself and what he is doing. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens, the Jews, hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because, now watch the wording, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over 10 cities. You know, the Lord is going to reward. Um, he says it over and over and over. I, I, I've even found it in the prophets. It says, behold, he's coming and his reward is with him. And uh, man, it's going to be worth every little thing you've done for him. You know, sometimes people do things for the Lord and uh, and and sometimes they, they get a little irked about it. And, um, you know, they, they just feel like they're getting short in the stick. They feel like... Uh, you know, somebody else is getting all the blessings. You know what? Just, just hang in there a little while. Lord says, if you've been faithful in a very little, the payday is going to be huge. Look at Psalm 40. Tonight you're going to go home and, you know, you'll probably get a little snack and, you know, and brush your teeth and, and you know, think about what's going to happen tomorrow. And, uh, you know, you'll talk to the Lord for a few minutes and then you're going to get in bed. 
did you ever think about what the Lord's thinking about? Did you ever wonder about that? Do you ever think, wonder what the Lord's thinking about? Well, I know part of what he's thinking about. Look at Psalm 40, verse 5. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. In other words, you, you, you can't even begin to even count them. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Look at verse 17. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You know what? You're, you're going to go to bed. I think a lot of Christians are going to go to bed tonight. And, you know, I'm, I'm not, they prayed. They read their Bible today. And, and you know, maybe, maybe it's just been a crazy day, busy day, a lot of black clouds, you know. And they didn't think about the Lord a whole lot today. But you know what the Lord thought about today? He sure thought about them. And uh, the Bible says his thoughts about you and I are more than can be numbered. Look at Psalm 56. David said, my meditation of him, he said, when I think about the Lord, he said, the longer I think about it, the sweeter it gets. This will bless your heart to think about him. Psalm 56, verse 9. And this is the last verse tonight. Psalm 56, verse 9. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. You know what that means? I means he's on your side. He's on your side. So when you catch yourself thinking all those dark thoughts and all those sad thoughts and all those worried thoughts and all those other kind of thoughts, it would be good every once in a while to find a place and just say, okay, I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to think about the Lord. And it'll sweeten things up. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for who you are. And thank you, Lord, that you love us. You care about us. Lord, uh, you gave yourself for us. You bought us. Uh, Lord, you intercede for us. And Lord, the list goes on and on and on. And Lord, we are going to rejoice out there in eternity in the new kindnesses that you show to us in eternity by Christ Jesus. Lord, it will never end. Lord, we will see you. We will serve you. Our, your name will be in our foreheads. Lord, we'll be in that place where you are the light. And um, Lord, it'll just be rejoicing forever. Now, Lord, help us, Lord, in this veil of tears that we live in and in this world of worries and problems. Lord, help us to very often, Lord, would you help us very often to meditate on thee. Lord, it's easy to meditate on the dark things, but Lord, in Jesus' name, help us to experience the delight that David talked about and meditate on thee in Jesus' name. With your heads bowed, I want to give you just a minute to pray. Lord, thank you for loving us and thank you for your great kindness toward us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.